Let's look at an inner product on Rn other than the standard dot product. This will be very closely related to the dot product, however. Say that you are working in Rn, where n is perhaps a quite a large number. And let's say vectors represent observations taken over some long time period. Suppose that we want to perform polynomial regression with these observations. Well, polynomial regression, as we now know, involves the dot product. Let's add a wrinkle to this. Let's fix n. Say n equals 10,000. So you've got 10,000 observations. And the wrinkle we're going to add is that not all of the observations are equally good. We see this kind of thing a lot, for example, in long-term scientific studies. If you are taking observations with some scientific instrument and you are periodically upgrading your technology, then newer observations are going to be better than old observations. Now, when you perform regression, if you use this dot product, the fact that these observations are better than these observations isn't being reflected. To reflect that, you could define this new inner product, the inner dot product, sorry, what? The weighted dot product for each of these n observations you have, you define a positive real number. And the bigger this real number, the more you're going to value the observation. So for example, if you think your first observation is very poor, you might that see one be very close to zero. If you think your last observation is very good, you might be that CN be close to one, let's say. It would be pretty standard for these numbers to vary between zero and one. And the inner dot, I keep saying that, the weighted dot product is the dot product with these scalars C thrown in. And now you see what I meant when I talked about making some observations more or less important. If we let C sub n be one, let's say, Whereas we let C sub one be 0 0.001, then this U1 and this V1 are having much less of an effect on this sum 
then this UN and VN are.